Hey y'all, coming to you today to give you what God's put on my heart. I just want to talk to you about a serious, serious subject. Um, I've been thinking about it the last couple days and uh, the Lord, like I said, laid it on my heart a couple days, a few words, and I didn't know it was going to come to this, but i just been thinking about it and I want to talk to you about hell. Um, as I, if you're my Facebook friend, you might have seen the other day I posted, you know, and said a few things. And, uh, just as I said then, you know, if you think about it, if you think about it and you got a loved one, some, somebody you love, a brother, a sister, a cousin, a mama, you know, and you know that there's something coming their way to hurt them, to harm them, a car wreck, you know, falling on a piece of glass and, you know, could stab them, not, you know, just different aspects of life, things that happen. Um, if, if, if something's coming against somebody you love, you're going to want to protect them. You're going to want to keep them from harm's way. Um, you're going to want to, um, try to stop it if you can, you know, as I said, and just as well, that's the Christian's job. That's the Christian's duty. That's what we're doing as Christians. We're trying to protect people. We're trying to warn people. We're trying to help people from going to hell. Um, just today, as I testified to a lady in the Walmart, if you think about it, think about it. In the old days, those mines, they would collapse and they would fall on people and people would be stuck. You know, people would be die dead from it, but there would pe be people that would be stuck in, in a place, you know, and the only way to get them out was people to dig them out, people to pull them out. And, you know, it's just the same way, as I said with the other story, it's the same way when folks are headed to hell. You just want to reach in and you want to pull them from the flames. And, you know, not everybody we can do that and not everybody even wants to hear that. Not everybody even believes anymore. But I'm telling you, if I could reach my hand in a flame and pull folks from hell, I would. That is our duty as a Christian. That is our duty you know, that is what we desire in our heart when we're living for Jesus and that love and that, that closeness, that relationship's there. You have a desire to share him. You have a desire to tell people so that they don't go to hell. You know, many, many, many people in the Bible, you think about it, many people in the Bible, they were persecuted. They were mocked. They were threw in jail. They were, they were killed for for telling the word of God, for trying to warn people from sin and, and hell. And that's the same thing. That's what we are today as Christians. As the prophets were, as those people were in those times trying to warn people from their sin and tell them of their wicked ways and ask them to turn around and to repent and to be saved. We are the same today and people don't like it. Just like they didn't like it then, they don't like, like it now. They don't like it. But us as Christians, we, 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 we don't care. You know, we, we overcome that. We overcome that through the power of God to not worry about whether somebody don't like it, whether, you know, somebody is going to come against us and mock us and ridicule us and think we're just plum crazy, you know, and people do think people think we're crazy, but you know, the word of God said is in Ezekiel that if someone is living in sin, that we are to tell them of their sin or else the blood is on our hands. The blood is on our hands, y'all. It's coming down. It's coming down to the wire. It's coming down to the end. And we have got to be ready. Um, Yeah, that was my kid. We have got to be ready. We have got to help people, those we love, anybody we can reach and pull them from the pits of hell. Y'all, the wire, I mean, the line is thin. The word of God says, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And it truly does. It truly does. Your redemption is drawing nigh. If you are lost, if you are bound, if you're in sin, if your heart's not right, you are lost and you are going to go to hell if you are not saved if you don't repent if you don't ask jesus to come into your heart if you don't ask him and beg him for mercy and grace if the sky split if the rapture takes place if you die within the next few hours you are going to go to hell and there's no turning back there is no turning back um you know 
I'm going to give some descriptions, and I got this from one of my good pastors um, that I like to listen to, and I didn't use what he told, what he said. I may use some of it because he, too, I'm sure, studied the Word of God and got these just as well as I did, these descriptions of hell out of the uh, Bible and out of the Word of God. But, um, you know, people think that hell is just when you die and you're done. It's the end, but it's not. It's not. Um, when you die and you go to hell, it is so much more, and it's never-ending. Um, the Word of God says that your mind will be intact, your feelings, your vision, your smell, your taste, all that's going to be there. All that's gonna be there and you're gonna, you're gonna feel, you're gonna smell, you're gonna hear. As the word of God said, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There'll be screaming. There'll be, there'll be people in torment. And as I said, you know, everything, it's gonna be there and you're gonna hear it. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna see it. It's, it's gonna be forever. It's not just the end. Um, one, one description the Bible gives us is a place of souls of the wicked. That's where the wicked people are going to go. People that are living in destruction. People that are living for, for the devil, for the world. Um, you're going to go to hell. There's no doubt about it. The word of God said the wicked will be punished. The wicked will have a place in the lake of fire. And that's another description, a lake of fire. It is going to be fire. As if you touch your hand to a cigarette, as if you touch your hand to a burning fire outside, as you, if you put your hand to an oven, if you put your hand to um, a hot motorcycle, I mean, it's going to be fire. It's going to burn. It's going to be, it's going to be rough. Um, a place of unquenchable fire. That's what the word of God says. Unquenchable fire. It's the word of God says it's where the worm dieth not. The worm is considered the flesh. That's us. It's where the worm dieth not, where the flesh dieth not. It's you can't die. You're not gonna die. Your body is gonna feel that torment. You are gonna smell the smoke of a burning flesh you're gonna hear the cries of people begging and it's too late it's too late eternal suffering eternal suffering as i said before it's going to be everlasting it's going to be eternal as those who live for jesus christ and go home in 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 the heavens above wherever god sets that because there's a lot of debate on that it's going to be everlasting just just the same hell is going to be everlasting the word of god said destruction destruction a place of no rest no rest you're not going to get in in no rest listen i get tired i get tired even saying now you know i need some rest there's not going to be no rest there it's a place of punishment for those who reject jesus right there plain and simple the word of god says if you reject jesus you're gonna go to hell if you deny him if you decide that you don't believe in him if you ain't gonna live for him you you're going to be punished because you rejected jesus outer darkness could you imagine closing your eyes and 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 all you see is orange and in different spots i believe that's the way it's going to be you're excuse me uh, i mean yeah your blood your vision is going to be there but at the same time, I just feel like, you know, it's going to be flames. It's going to be the burning. It's going to be the flickering that you, you know, see behind your eye eyelids. Because, I mean, it's a place of no rest. And think about it. If you imagine blindness, if you imagine, if you're in darkness, I mean, after a while, that darkness has got to go. You need some light. Hallelujah. You need some light. You need Jesus Christ. The Word of God says conscious torment conscious torment you think about it if your body is burning if your soul i mean if your arms your limbs you're burning uncontrollably i mean it's going to be conscious torment and that's not a place we want to go i mean come on it's not a place you want to go but listen the god's word god's spirit god's truth the bible the word of god said that the bible was written a long time ago if I look up scripture here, 
a long time ago in Romans um 12 and no Romans 15 and 4 the word of God says that for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture we might have hope the word of God says in 2 Timothy 3 and 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable Profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. The word of God was written a long time ago by men that were unctioned by the Holy Ghost power. That men that, men that were covered by the blood. Those that were searching and seeking and living holy. The Holy Ghost come upon them. And God inspire them to write the things that were going on to write the words that jesus was speaking when he was going out teaching and giving knowledge you know as i said the word of god it is it is knowledge it is knowledge of how we're supposed to talk how we're supposed to walk how we're supposed to live and if we believe jesus if we confess with our mouth and we repent and we live by this bible you know some people use the description Bible, biblical instructions before leaving earth. Biblical instructions before leaving earth. As I said, the word of God here, profitable, is me it, it is meant to improve our lives for doctrine, the the knowledge, the 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 knowingness of God, um reproof to correct us, to change us, to make us somebody totally different. The word of God says, when you become, when you become Christ-like, when you ask God to come in your heart, you are a new man. All things old, they're passed away and all things have become new. You're new. You are to put away the old man. You are to put away evil speaking, evil talking, evil actions. You are to bear good fruit. And the word of God says that those who are living, they're going to be known by their fruit. If you're doing simple, ugly things and you still professing Jesus, you're a lie. You're a lie because Jesus Christ is right. He is real. He is corrective. He is love. He is compassion. He is mercy. He is help. He is hope. He is peace. He is comfort. And if you're none of those I'm sorry, you can you can confess Jesus. You can profess that you're a Christian because everybody's a Christian. You can confess that you're a Christian. Say you're a Christian in your in lip service all you want to. But God says to love not in this little tongue, not talk about it with this little tongue, but in truth, in your heart, indeed. This word is specific instructions how to live. It corrects us and it inspires us to change, to be somebody different. Listen, a lot of people think because I'm good, I'm going to hell. It's just not true. There's a lot of good people in hell. There's a difference in goodness, godliness. There is a difference. You know, goodness, the description there is unaccountable. You think about it. The Word of God holds us accountable. He holds us accountable for how we walk, how we talk, how we act, how we live. It holds us accountable to who we are. We are to be Christ-like. Christ was spit on. He was mocked. He was ridiculed. He was used and he was abused, but he still loved. He still reached out. He still healed the blind. He still raised the dead. He still touched the lame. He still touched the broken. He t still healed the bodies of those in sickness. But as I say, goodness, goodness is a characteristic of being good. Okay, godliness. Think about that. He said to be godly, holy, Christ-like, like him. Godliness, it, the description here is quality, uh, um, quality uh, or practice of conforming to the laws and the wishes of God. Reflecting the nature of God. Reflecting the nature of God. It's devoutness of, to morals and uprightness. It's devoutness to righteousness, to who God wants us to be. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. People take that out of context all the time. And us holiness people, and I will proclaim holiness, and you can look at it. Anybody can look at it however they want to. I don't think I'm better than nobody. 
I'll never be better than anybody. I don't want to be better than anybody. The only person I want to be better than is Jesus Christ. I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, through Jesus Christ is who I was yesterday. Through Jesus Christ, as I said, is who I was yesterday. I want to be a better person. I want to change whatever God speaks to me, things God tells me not to do, who God tells me to be. Holiness. The description here is condition of something or someone set apart, sacrifice, sacred, sanctified, consecrated, dedicated. Holiness is is it's an outward appearance and it's an inward appearance. And you can have the outward appearance all you want. If the inward man ain't right, the outward don't mean nothing. Praise God. But if you got it right on the heart, the out the outward is going to speak. Your actions, the way you dress, the way you talk. If you walking around everything plopped out and you are in, dressed in a provocative way, if you showing things off, if you're if you're making yourself, you know, if you are not holiness. Holiness, as I said, is it, it is all in one. Everything that we are, how we dress, how we act, how we talk, how we speak, how we live, how we treat others, holiness. It, and not only that, it's being dedicated. People don't understand that. If you only give part of yourself to someone, you're, you're not going to be dedicated. If you're only letting people have a part of you, you're not being dedicated. Think about it. If you're on a spouse, if you're only giving your wife, your husband, um, two hours out of the day, or, or if you only giving them, um, your attention when necessary, like if you're only giving part of yourself, you're not dedicated just as well with God. He wants everything, your mind, your heart, your soul, your body. Your body is a temple. Then your body belongs to God. Everything that you are, you it belongs to God. And that's how a lot of people are swaying. Listen to me. It's simple. That's how a lot of people are giving up. They're turning around. Their, their, their persecution comes. Things come against you and you, you cannot stand strong. Because you only giving part of yourself. You only giving what you want God to have. If you're not living fully and holy, dedicated in holiness to the Lord, you're going to, I mean, listen, you're going to falter and fail regardless. You're going to fail. We will never be per perfect. The only person that walked this earth that was perfect was Jesus Christ. But. You, when you give God everything, when you lay everything at his feet, you will find yourself stronger, better, and able to live this life. So I'm telling you, um, you know, hell was the message here and, and the, the word of God, repent and living for God is your freedom. The word of God said the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life. It's up to you to choose. It's up to you to choose. But I'm telling you, child of God, reach out to those you love, to, to anybody you can. Sinner, repent and be saved. There is help. There is hope. If you're heading down that path of destruction, if you're living in that destruction, God is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Give yourself holy, righteously, upright. God, God speaks on it time and time again. He said, those that are living in such a way, no whoremonger, no thief, no robber, no, no stealer, no home record. You're not going to have a place in heaven. You're going to go to hell. Everlasting. Everlasting, he said, the wicked will be punished. Those that are doing ugly, ungodly things will be punished, and the punishment is hell. Today, I ask you to repent. I ask you to repent. I ask you, if you don't know God, come to him. The The word of God, biblical instructions before leaving the earth, that Bible was written a long time ago. I have been unctioned by the Holy Ghost, by the power of God to reach out to someone to ask them, don't, don't go to hell, repent, be saved, 
just as the prophets and those a long time ago that were unctioned by the Holy Ghost to warn people of their sin and destruction. I, look on every hand. Read Matthew 24. All the things have come to pass. If you don't believe, ask God for help. Ask Him to help you believe in some way. I'm telling you, it is coming down. It is any moment Jesus could split the sky. Any moment He could come back. And if you're not right, if you die before your time, if you die before you get it right, hell is where you're going. Please be saved. Be saved today in Jesus' name. Be saved, y'all.